Guys, what's going on? So this is gonna be, uh, relatively quick, I feel like, uh, because I feel like a lot of this is very obvious, but I did want to update- I've been updating a lot of old lists that I've done in the past, and, uh, I haven't done a, uh, hero tier list in a little while, and so I thought that I would update this as well, because things have changed. Uh, not a lot of things, but- I, maybe I have, like, new perspective on some of these things, and, uh, and I would like to give my thoughts on a 24.1, uh, hero tier list. Uh, this is another example of a tier list that I'm not going to update all the time, because for the most part, most things, even if, uh, things change, they don't change that drastically, but I did look at my old tier list, and it's pretty bad, so I was like, you know what, we need to update this. Um, so... <clears throat> Uh, we'll start at the top, because I feel like this is very obvious. Um, the way that I went was, uh, Zeus, and then Mermaid, and then Necromancer. Zeus and, uh, Necromancer are very obviously the legendary heroes of this game. Uh, Zeus is amazing because, very specifically, uh, Zeus is amazing because of the level 15 ability. Um, I love that this always happens. Every single time. I literally just refreshed this right before I started this video. So however long this took, uh, I, I feel like I have the ability to go in and out of this app. I will, I will, I will forever complain about this because it always, it only happens to me in videos. I can literally be on a Rush Royale, have Rush Royale open, go watch a, like a two hour, like YouTube video, come back. It'll still be open. But I go away from this for five minutes, for like, for like two minutes, and, and I come back, and it's, it's gone. And it's like, no, you have to, it, it refreshed itself. And, and it, it annoys me every single time. And I will always, I will always mention it. Um, but here we go. So, Zeus, um, is very obviously, uh, the best hero in this game. Um, and it's very specifically for the level 15 ability. A sub-level 15 Zeus is good, it's not great. It's not why everybody uses it. Um, being able to merge, uh, merge up anything, merge up, uh, give, giving you, uh, two tiles, th I believe it's two tiles, um, or no, the Zeus tiles are somewhere here. Uh, you get two tiles, um, I don't think that changes, uh, when you get, when you rank up. Um, when you have the, the Zeus heroic item, you do get extra tiles, um, but for the most part, you only get the two tiles, um, and then, does it say that it gets, I don't, I, I'm so far beyond, like, a, a max Zeus or any level Zeus that I don't know. Yeah, you get two tiles, um, and I don't think you get another tile, um, and then at 15, uh, when you have things on those tiles, uh, they have the ability to, uh, merge rank up. Uh, so at, uh, level 15, when you unlock it, you get se a 17% chance of, um, of it going up. And then at max, uh, not only do you have a 20% chance of the, the level, uh, going up, but you can also at that point get doubles, um, which is going to make that even more insane. Um, and then at, at, uh, at the other percentages, uh, you're getting uh, damage, you're getting attack speed, um, you're getting area damage, you're, uh, on the, the ones on the tile um, are getting attack speed increases, damage increases, um, you're getting uh, crit, uh, crit chance and crit, uh, um, you're getting crit chance increases, um, like it just does everything that you want something to do in this game. Um, you're getting every ounce of bonuses that you could possibly want for your entire field. Um, and then the things on the tiles are getting, uh, leveled up. Um, I don't think I need to tell you why Zeus is good. Zeus is very specifically good when you get it to 15, not before. It's okay before, but very specifically, it is good when you get it to 15, and that is why it, everybody uses it. Um, Zeus is without a doubt, number one. Um, I want to say that number two, uh, specifically because I was doing this tier list, um, it, it, in terms of S tier, what would you, uh, what will you always want in this game? 
Everything that Zeus does is everything that you want in this game. And number two to that is Mermaid. I have no problem putting Mermaid at level t uh, at number two on S tier as the second best hero. Um, you always want to cleanse. Uh, being able to cleanse in this game is is so important, and it becomes even more important as the game as you um, get higher and higher into the rankings, um, and you get triple bosses every single uh, like every thirty seconds. You're getting triple bossed, and then triple boss again, and then triple boss again. Um, if you cannot cleanse efficiently and quickly with counter spells and uh, unit abilities and a mermaid. If you can't efficiently cleanse and you get triple king pudding and then the next uh, round you get a tribunal and two dark priests and if you can't like cleanse you will just die and uh mermaid uh not only cleanses with the the bubble ability um but I have also uh fallen in love with hidden defense hidden defense works so well and as you keep um upgrading it uh, it just gets better and better and better um, to the point where um, at a certain point, it'll get to at level 20, it gets to 20 seconds. Um, every 20 seconds, even if something doesn't have a bubble, when it would be when it would get a negative effect, um, you get an automatic bubble and then you wait 20 seconds again and then it happens again. I cannot tell you how many times this has saved me. Because most of the time, your bubble activations will save your, your units, but every so often, something won't have, won't have a bubble, and it'll try to get negative affected, and then this will save it. Um, it's, it's one of the best abilities. Yes, it has attack speed. Yes, it has crit damage increase. Um, you're not using it for either of those things. Uh, those just happen, happen to be happy bonuses. You also get damage increase. You also get mana, which is kind of overlooked. Um, if you have a mermaid, um, and it, you're using it in the beginning, um, and you don't, you know, like, let's say your opponent isn't playing, like, uh, negative, things that will negative, negatively affect you. Use Mermaid all the time. As soon as you can use Mermaid, it doesn't matter if you think you need it or if you don't need it, always use Mermaid because you are getting free mana off of it. And if you don't use it, you're just wasting mana. Um, and then once you get to second win, you ha you start getting the ability to get double ab abilities, it just becomes even crazier. Um, I would highly recommend of all the epics uh, to invest in to invest very heavily into mermaid um getting to the getting to 20 and being able to uh get double activations and having everything just be better um it's going to it, you're you're going to use mermaid all the time um necromancer as the second legendary is probably going to be um the the number 3 spot in S tier um, it's not specifically just for being a toxic card, but because of because of the uh, Necromancer update changes, um, they decided to make it a uh, um, what's it called a uh, attacking a DPS uh, based uh, card as well. Um, so you get two buff tiles. Um, you they get an insta kill chance. You get a uh, chance to receive mana. You uh, summon ghosts whenever the things on those tiles kill things. Um, you're also getting an insta kill chance every single time you activate uh, necromancer. Um, your tiles get an insta kill chance. Um, and then at a certain point at 10, uh, you also have the ability to summon in a phantom, um, which also destroys monster armor and it uh, attacks bosses. Um, and then I didn't even realize this, but the level of 15 ability also um, allows your tiles to send out basically what are basically shamans um you then start being able to shaman down your opponent um being able to do all of this um with just your hero it's again it's just a, a legendary heroes are legendary for a reason it's everything that you want um a deck to do it's everything you want your deck to do it doesn't just do the one thing well it does everything it gives you it gives you insta kill. It gives you shamans. It gives you um, um, increased damage. It gives you um, armor destruction. 
uh, it gives you control because now uh, whenever you're going up against a necromancer deck, you know that you have to build your deck um, in you utilizing the inside six squares and you don't want to utilize the outside because uh, necromancer is just going to lock them out. Um, and then being able to uh, double necromancer. Um, I've seen it where uh, somebody double necromancered uh, during a boss round. They did it. Um, at the beginning, and then uh, they were able to activate it again because they got a double. Uh, the they got the second wind, um, and then getting the necromancer item, you're just gonna get more tiles, and then it just gets better from there. Um, moving on to A tier, I feel like S tier is very obvious. Moving on to A tier, um, I did Mari, and then J, and then Gadget, and then Trainer. Um, that is how uh, Trainer. Um, Captain, I will, I will forever call it trainer. Um, I even changed the picture specifically, uh, so that it, it would be the updated picture. Um, but I, I did Mari first and then Jay and then Gadget and then, um, and then trainer. Uh, let me talk about Mari and Jay, uh, together. So the reason why I did Mari first, um, is very specifically, uh, for the 15 ability. I feel like if you just have uh, the first three abilities, uh, just it in general, um, and then the five ability, and then the ten ability, I think those abilities are good, but I think that it's very specific to the Spirit Master deck. But the reason why uh, Equilibrium decks, uh, decks or people that are still running Monk Equilibrium, the reason why they're still running Amari um, is very specifically for the Toxic Slime level 15 ability. The level 15 ability gives you free armor destruction, and you don't have to activate Mari. It just happens whenever an unstable connection uh, would happen. Uh, so whenever a mini boss or boss appears, um, the you, they get an automatic uh, at level 15 20% armor destruction. The difference between a level 15 and a level 20 Mari is an extra 10% armor destruction. Um, armor destruction because this game is is advancing the way that it is having a constant automatic 30% armor destruction is huge um monk equilibrium decks because you're trying to full board monk um they don't have the ability to run a trapper or a um a chemist or a knight statue anything that uh would do armor destruction they don't have the ability to to run that so if you just ran a Mari in that deck, uh, you would automatically get be getting 30% armor destruction just because. Um, beyond that, you're also... Uh, the Mari ability is an insta-kill forever. Um, it, it automatically kills a group of things, um, and then it also summons in um, a unit onto your opponent's side that does increase in health over the course of the game. Um, and as the game progresses, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where it almost feels like another boss, um, that you're sending to your opponent. If you have, if your opponent is losing, um, the waves, um, and they get a large, um, boss, you have the ability to summon in a Mari right before the boss, theoretically making them kill the bot that uh, your unit first, then start attacking the boss. You can compile this where once you start getting into triple bosses, if they can't even kill the first boss, you summon it before the second boss. At which point they have to kill, they have to continue attempting to kill the first boss, then kill your unit then kill the second boss, then kill the third boss. Um, it starts to become an actual kill condition to just kill Mari, to, to just, um, when you just use your Mari tokens. Um, all of those things, is, but especially the 15 ability, I feel like it makes Mari a slightly more usable unit than Jay. But with that being said, the reason why Jay is so high, even though the crack shot uh, or the sudden shot got nerfed, um, I still think that it's very good. And I still think that it's very good because mo the way that most people build decks, uh, they don't really full board anymore. And if they are full boarding, like uh, my aforementioned uh, monk deck, you would probably use either a mermaid or a Amari uh, for the armor destruction and the insta-kill. Um, or you're using mermaid because you just want that extra 
um, uh, protection. If you were running a less than full board kind of deck, like a monk deck, a, um, a floral frenzy blade dancer deck, if you are running something else, like an inquisitor deck, like a, a spirit master deck, potentially, uh, spirit master would probably use, uh, Mari, um, but like a spirit master deck, any deck that doesn't utilize every single square, you're probably going to run J be specifically because the, uh, you get four automatic wind tiles that automatically give you 40%. Gadget, at max, um, when you get a gold uh, tile, um, what it's going to do is it's going to give you double all of your bonuses. So at level 20, um, even though a gadget tile is 25%, doubled. If that is a gold tile, it is now 50%. You're getting a 50% attack speed bonus um, with everything else. Uh, the reason why J is so much better and why those decks would not use Gadget and they would choose to use J instead um, is because one of the things that will separate a player that wins and a player that doesn't in a mirror match is who can set up quicker. If you have a J and you already know where your J tiles are at the beginning of the game, and then you build on those J tiles for the whole game, that will already put you at an advantage over somebody who is doing the same thing, but with gadget tiles. Because the only way that gadget tiles will be better at attack speed than a J tile um, is if it's on a gold. I have played a lot of co-op games uh, in current co-op level 13, where some games, I literally get no gadget tiles, gold tiles, and sometimes I get six uh, gold tiles. And that inconsistency is why people would choose to run J over gadget. Gadget has better bonuses, but J is more consistent, and, it, and it, this game is built on consistency. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to win every third game if I get a gold tile on, you know, this lucky Inquisitor like that I've placed. You can't just play the game like that. You need the consistency, and Jay provides that consistency. Even though Crack Shot is much worse than it used to be, it's uh, the Sudden Shot is, is much worse than it used to be, um, in the decks that use this, it's still good. I've seen J, um, or Monk Blessing decks run a J. Even though it's, they're utilizing more than one, the one tile, they would rather put a, uh, centered monk, their one centered monk onto a J tile than have the inconsistency of a gadget, maybe not giving it, um, a gold tile. Um, even though all of the rest of their, um, their monks, uh, would, could use that as well. Um, that kind of build doesn't care about anything that's not the center monk. Um, a, a Dark Inquisitor doesn't care about anything that's not the Dark Inquisitor tile. Um, and because it's a single-use single, single use tile, if you can't get the gold tile onto that tile, you're just at a disadvantage uh, using Gadget than you would be with just using J. Um, so that's part of my reasoning for Gadget. Uh, the, the next argument comes between Gadget and, uh, Captain. Um, obviously, Gadget is better. Um, the bonuses that you're getting from Gadget, uh, the damage that you're getting from Gadget, the immediate damage that you're getting from Gadget hitting the entire field is obviously going to be better, uh, than a Captain. Uh, the... My only ca uh, caveat to saying that Gadget is good, if you have a low-level Gadget, um, because Gadget is a very, it's an epic hero, it's epic heroes are very difficult to get. If you have a low-level Gadget, I do think that Captain is better. Um, being Having a level 1 Gadget, or a sub-level 5, where you're getting the attack speed increase, um, and you're only getting uh, the, the damage increase on all of your tiles, um, having a low-level gadget, like a, a sub-level 5 gadget, like a 1, 2, 3, 4, um, I feel like the amount of effort that you would need 
to get to, especially because the game is, um, is quicker now. It gets more difficult quicker and you don't have as much time. Gadget is one of the heroes that takes the longest, um, to activate. So if you have a sub level five gadget and you have a very high level trainer, because when you get a, you know, a level four, by the time you get a level four gadget, your trainer should probably still be pretty, uh, l- your trainer should be pretty high. Um, I do, I, I, I'm never going to stop calling it a trainer. Your captain should be very high. Um, I think that captain is much better. Uh, like a high level captain is much better than a low level, uh, gadget. Uh, the attack speed increase that you're automatically getting, um, just right out the gate is going to be huge for nuking down bosses. Um, the explosive surprise is almost never going to come into play. Um, and then once you get the damage increase from the team boost, um, and then you get the recruit training so that you get the, um, the anchor, uh, just on the field so that you get the bonus whenever or all the time. Um, all of these things are going to be huge. Um, just because Captain is the first hero that you get doesn't mean that it's bad. And so even though it's this low on A, I still do think that it's very strong. Um, and that if you have a high level Captain, I would highly recommend you use it over Gadget, even though Gadget is flashier. Um, when you have a sub level uh, 15 Gadget, and you're only getting two tiles at a time, there are 15 tiles on the board, and so you have to activate it eight times in order to fill up your entire board, which takes forever. And in this increasing speed game, uh, having to hit Gadget eight times very early on is very difficult. Being a, like there, you're going to end some games where you don't even fill up the field and you just die. At which point, uh, captain is just better because you can, you can time when you use it. And obviously, uh, you're using it whenever there's bosses so that you can nuke down bosses. Um, and it's very strong. Um, in terms of B, um, I, I basically, the way, okay, so the way that I did my B tier is that I just wanted a tier below an A tier of heroes that I think are very niche, but could be very good. Um, I think that Snowflake is fine. Uh, they nerfed the, the amount of time that the, their units freeze, um, in order to, uh, kill off a lot of um, toxic decks. Um, I think that people who are using Snowflake, obviously your better choice is a Necromancer. Just invest in a Necromancer and you'll never use Snowflake again. Um, and I, I think that Flicker is, is, Flicker is probably good, but because the only way that you can get it is Dragon Rift, and a lot of people don't even like playing Dragon Rift. I can't see a lot of people choosing to um, use that amount of effort in order to get flicker shards just to make a just to make a deck. Um, flicker is one of those things that's very good in events. It's very good in Royal Trials. It's very good in um, a Random League. But in terms of regular PvP, I feel like if Flickr was good, um, there would be pro people decks uh, that are using it. And I've never seen a serious deck use Flickr. Uh, There was a cute deck um, that was a clock-based deck. It had no DPS creature other than Flickr. And all it was, was it was just a clock deck. You just put clocks on the field, and then you upgraded your clocks. I thought it was hilarious, but that's the only, like, quote-unquote, serious deck I've ever seen um, in uh, in competitive PvP. I've never seen any other deck use Flicker. Um, some people have tried to be cute with uh, Blooming Dash Blade Dancer, and they use Flicker. I don't think it's that great. I think Portal Keeper just needs talents. Um, I'm not going to get into that. Um, but that's the reason why both of those are in B tier. Um, in terms of F tier, I did do this in order, um, in terms, I, I did, uh, Elementalist and then Bestie and then Jake Paul and then Trickster. Um, I do think that Jake Paul, if you have it leveled up, I, I guess it's good. I, I hear it's good. 
Um, my problem with Jake Paul is you will never level it up. <laughs> if you don't even have it, you're never going to have it. And if you do have it, you're never going to level it up. Uh, Jake Paul was an event hero and they couldn't make it good. Um, because then it would be a pay to win event hero that is not coming back. Um, and if, and so they had to make it kind of okay. And I've never seen anybody use it. Pro players have a uh, level 20. They, you know, they obviously wailed out, um, knowing that it was a special event. Um, and they have level 20 Jake Pauls. They don't use Jake Paul. Um, I have never seen any serious deck use a Jake Paul. Um, it's a, like a very early on, you know, like some people might have a level three version, um, like in, in very low arenas, uh, they might have like a level one, a level two, a level three, maybe a level five Jake Paul, and maybe it's good that early on, but I can't in all good conscience say that it's it's any better than where that is. And the only reason why I don't think it's the worst card um, is because I think that Trickster is the worst. Um, Trickster is the worst hero because it teaches you the wrong lesson in this game. Nobody uses Trickster as a toxic card anymore. Um, at best, it was being used as a toxic card. Um, it was like before Snowflake, um, when not, not, not a lot of people had Necromancer. Um, and so you had like a high level trickster. Um, and it was when you could, uh, do priest. It went, it was, it, it was in a deck that was called the no win deck. Um, you, the deck didn't have a win condition. It just killed every, every single unit that you had on the field and denied you mana so that it could obtain more mana. Um, it was a Harlequin shaman mime summoner priestess deck with trickster all you did was you just copied all of your uh shamans um and then you used trickster as soon as you could and you just killed everything um until like they couldn't win and you basically won in the first two rounds or you didn't win at all um that was the best usage of trickster and now that Frost has that ability, Trickster isn't great. Um, there is literally no reason for you to say, I need more mana, because what I need more mana translates to is I'm not killing things, and so I'm not getting mana. Your solution is not to put a cauldron in your deck, it's to kill things. <laughs> if you kill things, you get mana. That's how you obtain mana. You don't get mana from mana producing things or heroes. Um, your hero is the best. It, like, like I said, in this S tier of heroes, you need a hero that does everything. Trickster literally does nothing. It does something that you should be doing yourself, killing things and so that you can obtain mana. Um, no game has ever been won because you have more you because you have mana. If you have if you have mana, it's because you are killing things. Um you having more mana for from Trickster is not that big of enough of a bonus to use Trickster. Um I do think that Bestie is fine. I it's it's not great. Um and that's why it's a little bit above Jake Paul. Um Bestie is probably the worst usable hero, um, that it's not just completely offensive to me. Um, I think that Bestie is, it does something. Um, and then Elementalist. I have an Elementalist heroic item. It's the only heroic item I have. I have a level 20 Elementalist and I still don't like it. Um, I think that Elementalist is at the top of F tier. Potentially it could be a B tier card, I suppose. Um, but it's also not good. Um, but yeah, um, I think that that is a pretty accurate tier list in terms of what people should be using and what they should not be using. Um, let me know how correct I am in the comments. I trust that everybody, uh, everybody loves my opinion on this and that I'm 100%, uh, these, this is a 100% factually correct, uh, tier list. Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, I will catch you guys next